Every time they tell me stop, I use Every comment, hate that makes my feel Gather up my energy and boom I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with Giving my blood so I am relentless We got a special edition <laughs> of the Keep Hammering Collective. I'm with Matt West. Surprise. How are you doing? I'm tired now, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was, I, I never get nervous about things. Um, I was nervous about going through today. Oh, really? Uh, yeah. You're an intimidating <laughs> guy, man. Oh, yeah. I and mean, we're in your world. So, <laughs> so Matt, just to, to set the stage, Matt is the, what's your title for PBR? It varies, honestly. Yeah. So, like, uh, a lot of people will go with the voice of the PBR in the sense that like I'm the live event announcer mm -hmm. for the tour that we're on right now. Right. And then when we start PBR teams, our teams competition in the fall, I move straight to television broadcast. Oh. So it's kind of crazy. Like there's not a lot of crossover. Like, you know, you don't see Bruce Buffer jumping on television a lot right. and doing the TV broadcast. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, you don't see John Anik Jeff jumping in the cage right. and announcing to the arena. Well, I get to do both. Nice. So for one tour, I'm in the arena. For one tour, I'm just television. It's it's crazy. So it's well, day to day, man. I just you, show up. You are so good at what you do. I appreciate it. I haven't I haven't seen you work. I mean, so I got invited last night to go to a PBR yeah. that's here in Eugene at Matthew Knight Arena. Great arena. Great you know, crowd. Oh, they they were fired up. You know, uh, we get kind of lumped in with the liberals and the blue type politics yeah. because it's Eugene and Portland and that's where the vote, voting base is. But most of Oregon is red. Yeah. And you saw they come out in droves. Yeah, it's Eugene, but there's a lot of country people here. You know what's cool about that, though, is like, you know, we we start our season at Madison Square Garden in New York City. Mm. New York gets a bad rap. Right. We're going next week into downtown Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. L.A. gets a bad rap. California in general gets right. a bad rap. We go to Chicago. We go to all these places that are stereotypical one way or the other. There's so many good people in the world. Yes. And I always say there's there's so much good in the world, but sometimes you've got to look a little harder yeah. to find it. Right. And, you know, you, you talk about politics in a certain area. It's fine because like like what I found is like I can completely disagree with people mm -hmm. and argue and get red faced and mad. And if we're done with that argument, we can still be friends. Yeah. There's some good in there. Yeah. Definitely. Not everybody's that way, no. unfortunately, but it would be nice if they were, man, there's just so much good in the world. It really well, I, I'm just going to say what stood out most for me last night, of course, the Cowboys, the athletes, the, the bulls, yeah. the crowd, but you are so good on the microphone. And then what stands out from that is your prayer. Yeah. The prayer that you gave to start the show, man, it was one of the best I've heard. I was so, it just, it touched me. Best part of my job. And, and you'll understand this because when you travel and you do things like this, you, you end up meeting and connecting with tons of different people and personalities. You get to see so many amazing things in the world. I, I, I've been to places and countries that I never dreamed I would be able to go to. Mm -hmm. um, throw all the awards, the accolades, everything aside. The greatest part of my job is to be, in, is to be able to pray in mm -hmm. front of thousands of people every day when I go to work. Right. Like, how cool is that? That's amazing. And, and as a Christian man in today's society, to be able to do that. And, and more importantly, when I say amen mm -hmm. to your thousands of people roar in applause and appreciation, oh. that again, it goes back to like, there's just so much positive. There's so much that we that we can build on. Right. There as, is. as positive humans. And so. Greatest part of my job, man. So oh, I appreciate that. I loved it. And and of course it's a, it's there's cowboys there. So normally you don't get cheering in the middle of a prayer. Yeah. But when you mention, <laughs> you know, our military yeah. members, you're yeah. gonna get a woo, you know, and it's great. It's yeah. great. It's it's cool, man. Uh it comes from the heart. I, yeah. I was raised in a in church. My parents raised me in a great little Baptist church in middle of nowhere, Oklahoma. I had the most amazing upbringing. Mm -hmm. Um I definitely took my wrong turns in the road through the college years, but ultimately I came back to a guy that really appreciates the opportunity to live this life mm -hmm. and know that I wouldn't have this life if it wasn't for God granting me these opportunities. So to be yeah. able to, to, to give back and to, to just say thank you in, in that sense is, is amazing. Well, I, I want to thank you for the seat you gave me last night. <laughs> Those were, I mean... I don't know if there's a better seat in the house unless it was on a bowl. It's a little different when it's up close though, right? Oh, it's so good. People see it on TV all the time. And like, like I've, I've sat next to a cage at a bunch of UFC fights. Yeah. 
different. So different. The energy, the, mm-hmm. the atmosphere, hearing the sounds. When you hear a guy get slammed off of a 1600 pound bull, it just, it hits different, man. And so I'm glad you guys got to come. I'm glad you enjoyed it. It's oh, not it your, your grandpa's rodeo. That's no, for sure. It's a show. It is. I mean, it's a whole event yeah. and a show. And I had never been, I've been to the normal rodeos. I never been to the, the PBR, yeah. all bulls. Um, it's uh, what, do you do rodeos too? I, I, that's an interesting question. Mm. I, I started doing rodeos, but I don't know that this is even out there in the world, but we just did a deal to where I'm going to be exclusive with PBR. Oh, okay. And nobody else. And so, uh, yeah, doing an exclusive contract with the PBR where the ink's not even dry yet. So well, congratulations. There it is. Yeah. I mean, it, you are, you are built for it for sure. I mean, God blessed you, gave you the tools, yeah. you're using them to your full advantage and that's that's how it's supposed to be so congratulations i appreciate it man I, i'm such a fan i'm a fan before anything else and so for me to get to go every single weekend and tell the stories of these guys mm-hmm. i mean because they don't have a huge platform right you know our athletes don't have podcasts that they're going and talking about themselves they're like i grew up super shy mm-hmm. uh very reserved uh, sometimes socially awkward in certain settings that that was me but now I get to tell their stories and I feel like it's my job to help fans connect with these guys because mm-hmm. they're, they're incredible athletes, but they're amazing humans too. Yeah. And, and they're a totally different breed. Uh, and so if I can connect those dots and help raise them to a bigger platform and more mm-hmm. eyeballs, man, what a, what a cool opportunity for me. You know, that, that reminds me of Rogan, Rogan yeah. with the fighters. He's a yeah. fan first and foremost. He, yeah. And he says that's the easiest job he has is calling those fights yeah. because he he knows that he loves those guys he loves the lifestyle yeah. loves the everything about it that's you too that's what makes you be able to tell those stories to allow the crowd to connect it's funny because a buddy of mine brought me a shirt one time and it said uh like the rodeo rogan okay. and it had my name on it and i was like yeah that's crazy but the difference between me and rogan uh he gets in and trains like mm-hmm. those fighters do You'll never see me on the back of a bull ever. <laughs> I tried it one time and it was the dumbest thing I've ever done in my life. You're a little big, aren't you? I uh, mean, way big. Those guys are, I mean, small, smaller yeah. stature yeah. and very strong, right? So much balance, so much core strength. Okay. Uh, their reaction time to be able to follow that bull's movements and be mm-hmm. able to react and manipulate their entire body uh, as to what direction that bull's going to go. And, and you never know. I mean, there's no set pattern. You can study. Like, like a fighter, you can study his tendencies. You, you can see videos on a bull and know that the majority of the time this is what he does, mm-hmm. but it's still a an animal with a mind of his own. Yeah. Everything can change just like that. Yeah. And so I tried it one time. Dumbest thing I've ever done. How I long did you stay the, on? Oh, I, I got on a bull that wouldn't jump across my cell phone. I mean, barely got <laughs> off the ground. I landed on the back of my head within like a second and a half. And, oh. and and when I say it's the dumbest thing I've ever done, I enrolled in the same college three times and never passed a semester there. <laughs> so I've done some dumb things. Um, it, it tested me, though. Yeah. I had to do it, right? Mm-hmm. Because for me to truly appreciate what these guys do every single day of their lives, mm-hmm. I had to feel it for myself yeah. and, and so that I could tell that story better. Yeah. Where and was that? Where did it, you do that at? Oklahoma. Oh, okay. Yeah, the same arena where I started announcing. It's half a mile from my property now where I live. Um, nobody was invited. Nobody was around. There was a handful of us there. And, <laughs> and it was funny because up until the point where they opened the gate, I looked like I knew what I was doing. Yeah, you're doing and all, I kind of had hand to, and doing everything. Yeah, and, and I had to get into that alpha male mentality of like, yeah. of course I know what I'm doing. Right. right. Um, and then when it started, I realized I didn't know <laughs> shit. I didn't know anything. I know. I think, do you think everybody who sits in that crowd wonders, what would it feel like if they could do it? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, you ever you ever go to a fight and, and wonder what it'd be like? Yeah. I'm, when you were younger, right? Uh, I think that's sure, what we yeah. all say. For sure. You know, if I was 20 years younger, I'd like to just try yeah. it and see where I if fit I in. If I would have trained, if I would have trained like yeah. these guys train, I bet I could, yeah. It's an old guy saying. <laughs> I, I get <laughs> it. Uh, I don't wonder that with bull riding ever because I grew up around it. Mm-hmm. I know how physically demanding it is. Yeah. I know that there's more to it than just showing up and, and riding. And you think about the sacrifice these guys make being mm. on the road every single weekend. Yeah. Uh, the the sacrifices that the families have to deal with, the the nerves of husbands on the road. We've got a week old baby at, at home oh. and 
and it's a sport. It's the it's only dangerous. sport where you can actually die practicing. Mm-hmm. There's there's no way around that. Mm-hmm. You have to get on live bulls for practice, right? And and you can die in a, a practice arena. And you can and wear the helmet. You can wear the what? What's yep. the jacket called? They wear just a vest. Like yeah, they the wear vest. a protective vest. But I can take my fingers and I can squeeze almost through through that. It's yeah. not hard. It's not like this table, right? Um, so you can't you can't eliminate that risk. No, I absolutely mean, it's there. not. A bull, a bull steps on you, steps on your chest or your head. It's not yeah. good. It's 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 a dangerous, dangerous game. There's nothing in the world like it. And it's funny because these guys are so unassuming when you look at them. Mm-hmm. They don't have that big presence of like yeah. you know. They just look like normal guys. Yeah. Until yeah. they go to work. Yeah. The the one tell that they don't have where a lot of fighters are kind of like that too. Where yeah. if you saw a fighter out normally, but they have the ears. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A, a Michael Chandler. <laughs> right? You know. So a bull rider is just like that, but without the ears. So you don't know. Yeah. You have no idea. Yeah. And, and it's like, if you walk into any Western store across the country, mm-hmm. you have no idea that that guy is a supreme athlete yeah. in his field. And, right. and I think this sport is just, I think it's so much different than everything else, man. And I'm a sports guy. I love, I love sports, but I just think this is so on another level mm-hmm. compared to everything else in the world. Just, just because, because of the dangers, because of the, you know, not knowing if, if you're going to get to go home every night. Oh, I know it's a, uh, yeah. I mean, every, every time that bull comes out and I think I was wondering about this too, cause you talked about bulls have tendencies, but I watch those bulls and if they come out and their horn gets hung up on the gate or something, yeah. it's kind of changing yeah. how they react. It feels like to yep. me. So you want I know they want their head straight mostly, it seems like, and then the gate comes open, then the bull can do it. But if it gets hung up or hits something, then it kind of changes where it goes, it feels like. You want to talk about having to be ready for anything and everything? Mm-hmm. The kid that won the round last night. Yeah, from Canby. Yeah. yeah. When he went to slide up on his bull, mm-hmm. he didn't call for them to open the gate. Oh, they just opened it. So his head like shook as mm-hmm. he slid up. Mm-hmm. The gate guy thought he was nodding his head, but he wasn't. Oh, so when that gate opened, he had to just immediately react and just go into survival mode. And, you know, your your mind has to just force your body into react, react, react. It worked mm-hmm. out in his favor. It did. Big time. Yeah, it was a good ride. But it shows you how, how much work and preparation has went into his craft. Yeah. Had to be ready. Uh, yeah. He wasn't ready for them to open the gate, but the gate opened. So he <laughs> had to make the most of it. Well, he had a good ride. And yeah. then the last... Last rider last night. What was his name? Jose Vitor. Lemmy. Oh my gosh, he's a monster. He looked so good. It's like all those guys. Like so much respect. But <clears throat> I don't know if it was a bull or the rider. He just did, played it perfect. But he looked in control yeah. the whole time. It's the tightest ride I saw. It's it's all between the ears with that guy. And it did, wasn't the highest scoring ride. No, but it was close. It was close. But it was like technically seemed perfect. The, everything he does is perfect. Mm-hmm. And I mean, outside of the arena too, his preparation is Mm. perfect. His mindset is perfect. He is the most dialed in athlete I think I've ever seen in the history of Mm. the sport. Like the way he trains, the way he eats, the way he, everything. Mm -hmm. Um, He's so mentally tough that, and that's the key, right? Is be mentally tough in whatever venture you're going to dive off in, uh, have it perfect between the ears Mm -hmm. before you go into the physical aspect. Played professional soccer at home in Brazil. I mean, the guy is just, he's mm-hmm. a stud athlete no matter what he does. But the work that he puts in, and I think that that's where everybody kind of looks at him and they go, what is that guy doing that's different than everybody else? Right. And it's everything that you don't see. Yeah, the and little things. Yeah, so there's a kid named Andrew Alvidres, who's mm-hmm. number two in the world right mm-hmm. now. Um, rode his bull and he flexes. Like yeah, he's, yeah. He's a, he's a big fan of yours. And so um, he's as close to that mental preparation as I've ever seen. Like he's, he's a deep thinker. He mm-hmm. really thinks about every aspect of his day and how it's going to benefit him in what he does in that arena. So how, so are they both from Brazil? No, Andrew is, Andrew's actually from Texas. Oh, he's okay. an American. Yeah. So oh, gotcha. we got Brazil and USA one and two right now. I saw a lot of Cowboys from Brazil. A lot of, them. why is that? You know, I, I think, uh, they leave Brazil, they leave their homes, they mm-hmm. leave their families, they leave literally everything they've ever known, mm-hmm. and they come here and they, they have to perform. Chase they a have dream. to ride. Yeah, yeah, they're chasing a dream, man. And it's more like that's the only purpose for being in the United States, mm-hmm. right? Is to perform at this sport. And whether they go back to Brazil or they stay here to give their families a better life. Mm-hmm. As Americans, we yeah. get so many distractions. Yeah. And, and 
I mean, we, we have it pretty good. Yeah. I mean, so it's Absolutely. like, if you don't make it in that, you could probably do something else, but yep. they're, that's like, like their way out or their way to, to provide. Yeah. I mean, yeah. That, that's it. Like that's their only purpose right mm -hmm. now. That's their goal mm -hmm. where so many of us, we're, we're trying to start a business or we're trying to work or we're yeah. distracted. Our families are here, which is a good distraction. They don't have that. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of their families are still in Brazil, so they focus on one thing. Right. And uh, it benefits them. Yeah. Big they time. got that hunger. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. So that preparation and you talked about, then I think of J.B. Mooney and he's seems like the, why is he so good? He's the anomaly, right? Yeah. He's the freak. Uh, he's, he's the once in a lifetime. Mm -hmm. He is just so incredibly tough, but it mm -hmm. all goes back to the mindset, yeah. to what happens between the ears. Mm -hmm. No matter what the physical he has to endure, his mind tells him he's the greatest in the world, the greatest that's ever done it. He steps into that cage or into that, into that arena. Yeah. I, I'm thinking like Conor McGregor type, right? right? Like right. doesn't matter. doesn't matter what bull it is. He got on a bull called Bushwhacker and, and Bushwhacker had bucked, bucked off 42 guys in a row. Mm hmm JB had been on him like 11 or 12 times mm -hmm. and bucked off and bucked off and bucked off. But every Still time they matched him. up, he was like, this is the day. Yeah. And he believed it in his heart of hearts and in his mind, he believed it. And that's why he's so great. Like, you know, we talk about those two and they have totally different preparations. JB's yeah. going to drink beer, smoke cigarettes, show up mm -hmm. and just be tough. Yeah. Jose is going to work. He's going to study. He's going to work more. Um, and they're two of the guys that a lot of people talk about being on the Mount Rushmore. Yeah. And um, JB's like on the tail end of his career. I mean, he's pretty, pretty banged up. Yeah, I mean, he? He, he won two PBR world titles. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's been beat up and, and again, that's to his credit. Like he did not let anything slow him down. Mm -hmm. Broken bones. Um, that's why he's got so much respect, man. He's one of my favorite guys that's ever done this sport. He's one of yeah. my favorite guys ever. He's just, he's a different level of, of mental toughness. Right. His body's yeah. paying for it. Yeah. And you don't want to see, you don't want kids to go, oh, that's how you do it. Right. Because you said he's the anomaly. Unless you're there's young. On, the only, there's only one JB. It's funny because he wanted everybody <laughs> in the locker room to try to do what he was doing. Cause he knew they couldn't. He, he knew it was like, yeah, you guys go out, you know, go to the bar, don't sleep, whatever you try to do what I do. Yeah. Because he knew yeah. that he was a one in a million type, uh, athlete. And I see he's won like $7 million. Yeah. It's I crazy. Mean, it's crazy. I don't, I don't think we'll ever talk about bull riding and not mention JB Mooney's name. Yeah. Cause I'm, I mean, I'm a casual, right. I, you know, there's casual fight fans, right. casual bull rider rodeo fans. That's me. Yep. I don't, I watch the highlights and I watch JB and, yeah. and, uh, it's, yeah. I mean, that's, that's who you see when you come up, you look at bull riding highlights or best bull rides. His name is up there. But you know why so many people, I, I think they're drawn first of all to the toughness and his, attitude towards give me the best bull on the planet mm -hmm. because I want to do something nobody else can do. Yeah. But outside of that, you start to see a character, mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think character is what draws us to certain people, right? Yeah. That personality. Definitely. Like we know that like, like Chandler's a family guy. He's mm -hmm. such a good hearted human being. Connor is this braggadocious showman. showman. Yeah. And people are going to gravitate towards each one for right. different reasons. I love both characters for different reasons, mm -hmm. right? We have that. And, and, and it goes back to my job and my purpose. I want to try to express these characters that I see behind yeah. the scenes. Yeah. I want the rest of the world to see that, man. Mm -hmm. Because we've our locker room's pretty pretty interesting. Yeah, to I say bet. The least. I bet. I mean, so much respect for those guys. You know, we've talked about fighting and bull riding mm -hmm. together. I was wondering about this, too, because... You know UFC, right? I yeah. mean, you've you've watched. Love it. So it seems like judging is always being talked about. Like the the last fight with Volk and uh, Islam. Yep. It's like who won? Who won? The judge this that. Um, I never hear maybe because I don't know, but bull riding is also judged. Who yep. judges the rides? So typically, it's old bull riders. Okay. Uh, and and it's guys that were in the sport for years, and. You don't hear as much talk about it because our sport's not as mainstream right now as UFC, mm -hmm. which is interesting because we're sister companies. We're, all, we're both owned by Endeavor. Oh. Um, so UFC, PBR, both celebrating 30th anniversaries. Okay. Sister companies. Same oh, ownership umbrella. That. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of talk within our circle mm -hmm. about judging and everything. But, you know, for the most part, 
everybody knows that those guys are trying to do the best possible job that they can. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to see things fair, straight down the middle. Mm -hmm. Um, but there, there, there's that talk. Is there? The, yeah, there is. Yeah. Um, but the thing about it is our guys realize there's nothing you can do about it. It's I, move on to the next one. I wonder if the difference is you said they're all old bull riders. Mm -hmm. The fighting judges aren't fighters. I, and and I, I don't understand that. Right? that. I think that's the biggest difference because How? you can tell like when the scores read out at the rodeo, I've never heard booze. I mean, yeah. you probably have. I have, yeah. You've, you've been yeah. around. But you hear it at fights all the time. Yep. And it's like, it, I don't know. I think that the judges not being tightly connected like an ex-rider or an ex-fighter, that has to be the difference. I had to get on a bull to know what it felt like just to talk about what these guys do. Yeah. How do you sit on the outside of an athletic competition where these guys are putting their entire livelihood on the line mm -hmm. without knowing what they're going through? Right. You can't study that on a video or in a book. Get in there and do it. Right. Um, and, and learn the the small little nuances of, of what these guys are doing. Um, yeah. You, don't get me started because I, I disagree with that all day, every day. I, I feel like you have had to have had some sort of background in a sport before you can truly know what it looks like on the inside. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's the biggest, it's like the judging is coming up all the time in the UFC. Yep. And then I was at the show last night and I'm like, man, these yeah. guys seem like they do it. Yeah. It's not perfect. Yeah. It's not perfect, but it seems pretty damn good. But it also adds interest mm -hmm. because now everybody wants the Monday morning quarterback. Yeah. Everybody. It, it, and it, it starts that water cooler conversation. Right. You know, right. who's right. Who's wrong. Who knows? Yeah. We're talking, well, you're talking about it. <laughs> that's it. That's it. And that's the key is to keep them talking about it. Right. Yeah. We don't have a whole lot of controversy in the sport of bull riding because that stereotypical cowboy show up, do your job, leave, don't, don't go bitch. to the next one. Yeah. You're not going to piss and moan. You've yeah. got to go show up and do your job. Mm -hmm. I beg guys to go out there and act like Conor McGregor. I beg <laughs> yeah. them sometimes, you know, and it's just, it's just not in them. Yeah. You know, no, I understand. They do seem very respectful. I saw one kid last night. I, I don't know who called it out, but how cute he was. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. And he's just like shaking his head. <laughs> yeah, he's 19. He's a little baby. <laughs> yeah. And I, Start talking about all the college girls that are watching him and he's just like super embarrassed and like, yeah. get the camera off of me. Like he got yeah. so, just so embarrassed and oh, it's funny. He looks, he does look like a nice kid. Yeah, he I is mean, super good kid. I mean, so young, but uh, yeah, that, that reminded me, like you talked about Connor, if he has a camera on him, he's putting on a show. Yep. The opposite end of the spectrum is that kid last night. Yeah. And, and there's a lot of that. And what then you got his name? Colton Hevelo. Okay. Yeah. He's a, he's a cool kid. And what you what you see on the camera is him, really. He's kind of a shy, laid back. You know, you get him just like any of us. You get us around the guys and you start to open up a little bit and have fun. But yeah, yeah he's pretty laid back, pretty chill. It, it, there's a lot of that in the locker room right now. How do, what, what makes, I mean, you talked about the dedication for being elite, but what makes just a good bull rider? What is, is it? Is it what's between the ears or is it that you saw, talked about that balance? What do you think? I mean, I think it all starts between the ears. I think yeah. you have to have the right mindset to, to be successful at anything in life. And mm -hmm. so I think it starts there, but with that it's hand in hand, you've got to put the work in. Mm -hmm. We talk about JB and, and, and it's almost, you know, comical what he's been able to accomplish in his career without putting the work in. Well, he, doesn't he, he is a rancher or I mean, yeah, he's, he's he, on horses. He he's, works in a totally different way. Okay. Right. And, and, and don't let him fool you. Mm -hmm. He puts a lot more prep into it. He just doesn't go to the gym right. and prepare the way most athletes do. I asked Dale yeah. about getting JB here to do the rental yeah. lift. I said, does, does JB ever train? He's like, no, no. JB came to my gym one time. <laughs> And, and it was funny because like some of the guys look around and they recognize him and they're like, what is he doing in the gym? And his first words were, where's the smoking section? <laughs> and Perfect. I laughed and I was like, well, we, we don't really have one. Yeah. He didn't have any reason to be there after that. <laughs> uh, but I, I think it starts with the mental because you've got to be mentally tough to go do what you do. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but then it. it quickly transcends into the physical. You've got to be able to mentally prepare yourself every day to put the work in to see the benefits and, and the guys that are super successful, Josie V Lemmy, uh, mm -hmm. two world titles. There's mm -hmm. a reason he works every single day at how do I get better at riding bulls? Mm -hmm. But that's also the difference. There's a lot of guys in life that want to just get to the dance and be a part of yeah. it. Yeah. 
And they're, then there's they're a those. Star. Yeah, they reached. They they got there. They yep. made they made the big show. Yep. My goal was to get here. I'm good with that. You know, check that off the list. What What do those guys make? Like, can they make a decent living if they're just at the show? It, <clears throat> yes and no. I mean, the 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 top half of the guys that you'll see on our our major tour will make a decent living. Mm-hmm. The rest of the guys are gonna have to show up and fight every weekend all year to get by and and that's the crazy thing about bull riding Mm. and that's why i have so much respect for these guys is because there are no guaranteed contracts Mm. they don't sign a contract where they're guaranteed x amount for showing up Mm -hmm. um they have to win or they don't get paid right and when they go to the lower level events they actually have to pay to compete okay still pay entry fees right so if they go to a a rodeo or a bull riding anywhere that's not our main tour Mm -hmm. They're having to pay a few hundred bucks to get just in. to get into the competition. Mm-hmm. Um, and so it goes back to, yeah, they're athletes. They're these incredible alphas, but they're passionate about what they do. Yeah. They have to be. And it's a grind. For, to, to pay to go to work? Yeah. <laughs> are you kidding me? Yeah, like, right. Like, if, if you pay to go to work and if you excel and you do really good compared to the rest of the guys in your, in your office mm-hmm. or in your cubicles, then we'll pay you. Right. Based on how good you do. Yeah. In what world does that make sense to a lot of people? Only, only a world where there's passion involved because, yeah, the office, probably not. But like in bow hunting, that's how you start. Yeah. You start. You got to buy your tags, license. Yep. If you want to go, if you want to hunt private property, you got to pay for that access. So people, very similar to bull riding, is you're paying for that opportunity. And it's because that passion is because you love it. You yeah. want that challenge or you want to hunt. And in bow hunting, you don't get paid. I right. mean, there's a few people who get ultimately get sponsorships and get paid, but for a long time, I mean, I went, I went broke many times over paying to go hunting. Same. When I started announcing, you know, I'd carry my own speakers, I'd play my own music and I would lose money on the weekends, but it's what I wanted to do. I felt a passion for it. I was connected to it. I, I loved my job. Mm-hmm. Um, but in that sense, how bad do you want to succeed? That yeah. you're willing to do that and sacrifice. You know, I might not have enough money to put food on the table, but, and I don't know if it's like so respectful or do you borderline have a gambling problem? Right. I don't know what, what yeah. the answer is, but it's like that passion, it's that self belief too. Yeah. To know that, like, hey, I truly can be the best. Mm-hmm. And, and I love that. Yeah. I love that mentality. How did you get, I mean, you've been doing this for decades now. So yeah. how did you get started? So I got forced to pick up a microphone in 2003. So, so you went from, so let's, you're, start, you're going to start your story here, but now you're going to be the exclusive PBR yeah. guy. Yeah. So how, how does one, so that's, there's one of you in the world. Right now, yeah. 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 How? Oh, man. I tell uh, the stories of outliers. That's a story of an outlier it, right it's there. It's wild because I go back to being super shy, socially awkward. And when I get out of here, you know, when I go back into town, I'm still that guy. Yeah. Right. Uh, 2003, I'm, I'm at this little bitty practice pen. It's a junior bull riding event, like little kids all the way up to kids that are 17. And me and a buddy kind of make fun of the announcer that's there because he just kind of pulled him out of the crowd. Yeah. And we were laughing at some of the things he was saying. And the guy basically says, well, if you think you can do better, you're doing it. <laughs> well, and he was like, like my uncle kind of, right? So he had the power to just force me to do it. And right. so I, I got forced, thrown into it. I did it. Um, I announced one all by myself, scared to death, maybe 100 people in the crowd. We got done doing that. And the lady that owned the organization, she said, are you going to come back and do the one in two weeks? And mm. I said, no, ma'am, I'll never do this again. <laughs> and she said, I'll pay you 75 bucks cash if you change your mind. And I said, what time do I need to be here? There you go. And uh, and it snowballed. I did like three in 2003 and these little bitty tiny events. And uh-huh. it just kind of snowballed. I met a guy that said, is this what you want to do for a living? And I said, I could do this for a living? <laughs> what? What? And uh, did you have a go to call back then? Did you, did you like a I didn't know what I was doing. It oh. was just like today. I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> and I don't know how I got here, but I'm loving every second of it. Gotcha. Right. Okay. Um, I didn't study my craft i didn't like there was a couple of guys so i always break it down there was a guy named clint mcspadden who's a hall of fame rodeo announcer um and then there's jim ross who was 
the voice of pro wrestling. Yeah, I remember him. Both yeah. Oklahoma guys, right? Oh, okay. I'm a huge rodeo fan. I'm a huge pro wrestling fan. Oh. And so those are the guys I would just like, I loved them. They were my guys. Mm. And uh, it's cool because I became friends with both of them as I got older in, in life. And, and uh, so I kind of studied how they told stories. And so the short version of a really long story, I got forced to do the first one. Yeah. Hated talking in front of people. Came back, kept doing it and doing it and doing it again. And I was like, I love this because I'm becoming somebody that I was always scared to be. Right. I was always scared to talk in front of a group of people. And now, mm -hmm. now, you know, I'm in front of thousands every weekend and it's like, it's almost Jekyll and Hyde. Yeah. Right. You flip yeah. a switch. Right. You become a showman. Mm -hmm. The lights go out and you go back home to normal life. I got the best of both worlds. I live yeah. in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, but on the weekends we go to New York or LA or Las Vegas, you know, it's, man, it's what a journey. It's a circus, man. It's, it's crazy. Well, I'm, I'm so impressed with how good you are at it. Um, I did. So you talked about, uh, key moments in your career as we were lifting and it mm -hmm. was, it was, you talked about. Um, there was a friend of yours who died who had a painting, yeah. but there's also a, a bull rider you said yeah. from a couple of years ago. Yeah. And yeah. I, tell me those. I, I, I kind of, so Clint McSpadden was the guy that, that was kind of my go-to guy is like mm -hmm. one of my heroes in this profession. He passed away. Uh, there were a couple of artifacts that started circulating in a, in an estate auction. And I ended up with this really cool oil painting that was in his office. And so now, now it's in my office. I kind of have him looking over my shoulder all the time. Um, when I go to my gym, I've got a picture of me and Jim Ross mm -hmm. and good old JR is kind of looking over my shoulder all the time. Uh, did he pass too? No, 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 okay, no. Yeah. He's still alive and well and, okay. and, and still killing the game in pro I've wrestling. I've seen clips, but I just, I, I don't know if they were old or new. Yeah. I'm not, I don't follow pro wrestling I, like that, but it, that's, it's, it's I'm glad he's still here. Crazy world. And and such a cool guy. Um, but then, you know, everybody's probably seen the movie eight seconds mm -hmm. from back in the day and, and. A lot of people don't realize that's a true story. It mm -hmm. actually happened. Lane Frost got killed in the arena at Cheyenne. And I knew a lot of those guys that traveled with Lane. And I was around all these people that would tell stories. And I, I never wanted to have one of those stories. Well, unfortunately, now I live with one of those stories. Because one of the guys that I met in that very first beginning of my career, in that little bitty arena in the middle of nowhere, Oklahoma, uh, I, I actually was announcing when he lost his life mm -hmm. uh, riding bulls. Um, and it was one of the toughest things that like I've ever had to endure in this industry. And, mm -hmm. and it's weird because you get into work mode and you don't really think about the, the realities of the mm -hmm. dangers of this sport. But again, it's like as soon as you shut the lights off mm -hmm. and life is real again. Yeah. And you realize you just lost one of your really, really good friends. Mm hmm. Um, then you start wondering, do I really want to be here? Do mm -hmm. I, do I want to do this? Can I emotionally continue to do this? But then, you know, over time you start thinking and you start praying and it's almost a disservice to my friend if I run away from it. Mm -hmm. Like I wanted to tell his story just like I want to tell all these athletes stories. Mm -hmm. And, uh, am I discounting what he gave to this sport if I run away? Right. So I, I, man, I had to do some soul searching, mm -hmm. um, it's tough, but you, you jump right back into the mix and now it's like you live every day and you, you, you know, you kind of honor their memory yeah. by showing up and going to work. Right. And like yeah. what a cool blessing that is. Right. It is. Yeah. And you know, death is part of life, It is, you know? And so when, when we lose those people, it's like, you know, I've talked about Roy a lot. He's here on mm -hmm. this table with us, but, uh, it's, uh, you know, they say people die twice when they die, mm -hmm. they lose their life. And then the last time somebody mentions their name. So it is part of our responsibility yeah. to continue that legacy. And I, I feel like you're doing that, but I, I can't help but wonder, you know, it's, it's all entertainment. Everybody's smiling, having a good mm -hmm. time and somebody could die. Yeah. I mean, it's, you know, just like, just like Dale Earnhardt, no senior, I guess died. Everybody's enjoying the race. And it's just like some of these, some of these in entertainment events are, maybe that's what make, maybe that's the appeal though. Yeah. It's so rare. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a possibility, but you're probably not going to see it happen. Right? right. I mean, you know, anything could happen in life, but mm -hmm. there's so many things that like, eh, it's probably not going to happen. Right. But there's a chance that it could. Mm -hmm. And, and I think we kind of gloss over 
that that's you know a harsh reality of the dangers of the sport. It can mm-hmm. happen, mm-hmm. but you don't see it happen. So out of sight, out of mind, right? Right. Until unfortunately it does, and then all of a sudden you you bring things back, and you're dealing with those emotions and. And, and I think about, you know, I think about the family and everything, but I also think about uh, the crowd that was in attendance that night. Mm -hmm. They saw something that they didn't expect to see. Right. Um, and they don't look at it the same way we do, Mm -hmm. but you know, for some people they might still deal with that. You know, you, you, you look at DeMar Hamlin on the football field, the people that were in attendance that day, they'll never forget that day. Right. Um, not because of the football game, but because of something that happened during a, an entertainment spectacle, mm-hmm. something that wasn't expected to happen, but it did. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's just life. Like yeah. you said, things happen and, and yeah. you deal with them. Mm-hmm. Who, who was your, your friend? His who... name's Mason Lowe. Okay. And so it's crazy because there's another little side note to all of that. You know, we're sitting around and a lot of our television people didn't know him personally. Mm. And they started to realize what a character he was. One of the funniest guys ever. Mm. Um, and I had started a podcast or getting ready to start a podcast solely based on him and his personality because our TV commentators hmm. and, and people behind the scenes didn't realize what a character right. he was. Okay. And so like I wanted to start a, a podcast so that people could have a connection with these guys and right. see, you know, nobody, people can watch you on social media, mm-hmm. but until you sit down and you talk, mm-hmm. they don't see your real character, right? Right. Social media is what we want people to see. Some yeah. people are really good about showing the positive and the negative. Some people just show the highlight reel. But when you sit down and you actually talk to somebody, you realize who that person is. Mm-hmm. And uh, that's kind of what I wanted to do. And, and yeah, so so Mason Lowe still lives in everything I do in life, right? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I do respect how, how you do want to shine a light on the lifestyle and the cowboys and the... And uh, it reminds me, I mean, that's kind of what Dale Brisby is doing, too, yeah. with his stuff. And uh, it's... Uh, I mean, it's entertainment, but it's also like, it, it's cool because it's like exposing people to this world that they wouldn't otherwise see. It's cool to be a cowboy. Yeah. It you know what? Like it. And, and you don't have to grow up on a ranch. Like right. that's the cool thing about being a cowboy is, is you don't <laughs> have to grow up on a ranch. You don't have to be from Oklahoma or Texas. You don't have to wear a hat or boots. Like, yeah. like there's things that, that we say, and we have this be cowboy mantra and it, it goes back to there's things that make a cowboy a real cowboy and mm-hmm. it's hard work, respect, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. the way you treat other people. That's what really, to me, being a cowboy is all about. Not working with animals necessarily. It's nope. more of that. No, nope. who you are in here. Yeah. Right. And if you're a good person, you work hard, you wake up every day, you care about the people around you. You want to help others. Like, I don't care what you do for a living. Yeah. I don't care if you wear tennis shoes, flip flops, boots, uh, like you can be a cowboy. Yeah. In, in your heart. And so to me, that's what it's about. And, what if and you're being non, able to fail does binary. What's that? Can you be a non binary cowboy? Cowboy. Oh, <laughs> there's a cowboy or a cowgirl. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's, it, yeah. I mean, I don't understand that. <laughs> I don't, yeah, I don't I mean, understand that, man. I don't like, either. don't, it, it's. <sighs> The world is a crazy place. It is. And so... Not at the rodeo, though. No. Rodeo is pretty cut and dry. There's beauty and simplicity. Yeah. Right? There's tough... I see toughness and beauty. That's right. (laughs) That's That's it. That's perfect. That's it. I don't need any in between. (laughs) Like, I either want to be tough or I want to be pretty. What is it? Robert O'Burr says tough and pretty. Yeah. 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 So... uh, That's... I want to be one or the other or both. I love how... um, Is it... What the clown or what? Flint, yeah, yeah. What's he? He's our entertainer, Flint Rasmussen. Is that, so? He's called the entertainer, or it's it's crazy because it, rodeo clown is what everybody knows okay, it yeah, as, yeah. right? And so I, it's old school rodeo clown. I don't know the lingo, but okay. But because PBR is different than mm-hmm. every rodeo you can think of, right? Mm-hmm. You you said that it's it's different than what a lot of people expect. It's it's more of a show. It's more entertainment than I think a lot of people realize. He transcended that profession. He took it from being a rodeo clown that stood out there and just told silly jokes yeah. and uh, painted his face to now he's part of the entire show. He's and a good some, dancer. Sometimes you can't take your eyes off of him. <laughs> I know. And it's weird to say that, but he's just so good at his job. He is. And so they 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 decided we're not going to call him a clown anymore because he does so much more than just, you know, so tell he's jokes. An entertainer. He's our entertainer, man. Oh, okay. That's, yeah. That seems more fitting because, yeah, I mean, everybody is watching him. He is. 
I mean, he's, you know, he was pointing to the girls last night yeah. up in the white sundresses or whatever they were in and just hilarious. And nothing scripted. And the, the, the old woman, 89 and a half years old yep. last night, that was... Who turned out to be a, a fan that had come to one of our events before, but more importantly, you said 89 and a half yes. and they called her Sarge because she was in the military. <laughs> I know. Like we, we laugh, we get back in the locker room and you decompress and you just kind of look at each other and go, I, I asked him, I said, Hey, did you, did you know anything about that? And he looked at me and he goes, no, it's really? weird how, what? and we keep having these things like, look, we're not in control of anything we do. Yeah. And, right. and whether that's in the event or in life, yeah, like there's, there's it's all like, part of God's plan. All God is just yep. moving us, moving all the pieces where he wants. That it. wasn't scripted then. Not at all. That wasn't, that was incredible. We just, it's, it's funny because we'll look at each other and we'll just kind of give it one of those, like, mm, we'll try something. Yeah. We'll try to get people to sing or we'll try right. to get people to dance. And none of us knew where he was going with that. Yeah. And he just randomly had been, and he said, you got to pay attention. Because I looked up there and I saw this little old lady. And when I looked up that direction, she just waved really big. And yeah. so I kind of winked at her. And he said, <laughs> I came back to her a few minutes later and she waved real big. And so kind of waved at her. And it was like, it was subtle all yeah. night long. Yeah. But there was some kind of connection. And he said, I just, I felt like that's the direction I wanted to go. And then they get to talking and um, random, man. Man, that was so, well, and what's crazy is you guys have, I assume those type of stories at every show, every weekend, something happens that we're just like, can you believe that happened? Yeah. Um, you know, we have a structure to our show just yeah. like anything else. Cause you've got to take certain commercial breaks and right. you've got to get out of television and, and we wing a lot of the stuff that we do in commercial breaks. Yeah. We, we kind of have some ideas of things that work here and there, but for the most part, we're just, yeah, let's see what happens. Well, what stands out to me is so here, I'm just a random guy, right? Went to the, went to the show last night and I have a million stories about it. So you guys, it's a testament to how good you are at your job because how many people were in attendance? Thousands last night. Right. They all are talking about their show last That's night. The hope. The That's PBR. the hope. The PBR. It's like, you guys did so good. I have a million things I want to talk about and thousands of other people have yeah. their own version of that story. That's the hope. And for me, that's the success rate. If, if we can get people leaving and talking about like, like, like the fact that you know anything about any of our guys, yeah. if you left there with one guy that you knew a story about and like Jose being, you know, the guy, right. I'll take that as a success yeah. because you remembered something about one of the stories that we told to make you connect to a guy to go back and let's talk about that athlete again. I, know, I remember something almost about, because you do such a good job of building that up, about the guy who broke his ankle three weeks ago, yeah. right? So yeah. he rode last night. Yep. Um, a million different, you know, the guy with the big red hair and that, I mean, he got bucked off right. in about half a second. I mean, it wasn't, he didn't just didn't get a good start. But I mean, I remember whatever you said about every cowboy. So that's the difference in me and a lot of people in my profession. Mm -hmm. So the kid you're talking about, he's from California. And I always tell him, Hey, as soon as you get off your bull, I don't care if you ride or buck Take off, get off. your helmet off. Yeah. Cause I want to see hair. your hair and I yeah. want to see that mustache that yeah. is that thick. Right. Um, because that's how people are going to remember, remember you. You're right. A hundred percent. And it doesn't matter if it's a silly little thing or whatever. Uh, there's a guy that's 38 years old. That's mm -hmm. that's old in this sport. Oh, is that? Uh, Joao Ricardo Vieta. Oh, no. Who was the other guy? The outlaw. Oh, Chase Outlaw. Yeah. So outlaw. How old's he? He's older. 30. 30? Yeah. He it, looks, he looks, yeah. he must have been doing this a while. I think he's 30. Yeah, I think he's right in there somewhere. Okay. Um, so here's a crazy story. So we're in Cheyenne, Wyoming. He comes down over the front of a bull. Bull smashes his face. Yeah. He goes into surgery that night. Complete reconstruction of one side of his face. Spends 12 hours on the operating table. They put, I think, six plates, like 60 screws or something like that in his face. Mm -hmm. um, but the big thing is reconstruct 12 hours of surgery. Fast forward the next July. And this is like L.A. Hollywood script stuff. The next July, same arena, same event. The little bastard wins it. Oh God. And you talk about coming full circle. Yeah. He he breaks his face in half. Yeah. Comes back to the same building or same arena and, and wins the event the next year. And it's just like you sit back and you go, Yeah. I don't even have to do no, anything. That's Hollywood there. The stories are right in themselves, it's, right? 
does he wear a helmet? He does. Now? Yeah, he does. So he didn't when that happened, he right? Yeah. Oh, he had Cra- one on. Yeah, and and again, it's it's crazy how like the helmets, the vests, like the yeah. protective gear will will serve a purpose, right? But it's not going to stop everything that happens, right? You know, sometimes the impact is just too great. What do you? So again, I'm a casual. What do you think about the guys who just wear the cowboy hat versus the guys who wear the helmet? They're crazy. Yeah. But I completely understand because there's a rule and, and, it, and it starts, there's a certain date in the early nineties mm-hmm. that if you were born before that, you don't have to wear a helmet. Okay. But if you were born after that date, it's mandatory. Okay. And the reason being is those guys are older and they started riding bulls before the helmet was actually created and became a part of this sport. Mm-hmm. There were no bull riding specific helmets. So they learn to do this job without that extra couple of pounds to try to balance. Right. And when you're thinking about, you know, quick reaction time, balance, manipulate your entire body, you throw another two or three pounds on. Yeah. I mean, that that's a huge difference. Right. Throw an extra couple of pounds on your pack when you're Mm -hmm. going up a mountain. You're gonna tell. Drastic difference. Yeah. And so that's why. A lot and people ask that question every week. Well, why aren't those guys wearing helmets? Well, it's it's not as easy as just saying you have to do it. Yeah. Well, when I, again, not knowing shit, when I see the guy with just the cowboy hat on, I'm like, God. What an idiot. Or badass. (laughs) I think badass. (laughs) It's weird how we look at it from different angles, right? Yeah. I I mean, maybe they aren't the smartest, (laughs) but they look like badasses. And they are. I just like that. I like seeing somebody pull their hat down. And I like like when their ears are sticking out because their hat's pulled down. I mean, to me, that's just like, oh. That's okay, the stereotypical this, tough cowboy, oh right? Oh my god, I love it, dude. A couple of weeks ago, one it's of those not guys smart. A couple of weeks ago, one of those guys actually took a shot to the face and he showed up the next weekend and he looked like he had got out of a, a, a cage. He had two black eyes <laughs> and was, his face was swollen and he competed like oh that. He gosh. got on a bull. And that's the thing. Like they're not taking six months off. No, they're they have to ride. They're taking three, four days off, maybe, yeah. and getting right back to work. What's the toughest, I mean, or the worst injury or whatever you've seen where you saw a cowboy get back up on and still ride? Well, I mean, we see guys like that. You know, he broke his ankle three weeks ago. Yeah. Uh, Tate Polmeyer, a right. kid from Kansas, and he's he's a teenager. So youth is on his side, he right? He jumped off last night, and I was watching if, if he'd favored one. Yeah. Because he had to land off the bowl. Right. Yeah. I went in sports medicine and uh I said, What are you doing here? He goes, Uh, oh, I'm riding. Yeah. And I said, What do you got? And he said, Oh, bull, they don't really get out on very much, which means he's gonna jump around in the chute, slam yeah. his ankle into the steel. <laughs> yeah. And he said, So they're gonna really tape me tape up it. tonight. Oh god. And so you know, you see things like that all the time. Guys yeah. get on with broken ribs. All the time. Yeah. Wow. I, I wouldn't get out of bed with broken ribs. Well, and they're I getting mean, on bulls. You bruise your ribs, and if like you cough or sneeze or do anything, like even w- riding a bull, I can't even imagine. Look, I talk for a living. If I stub my toe, I'm <laughs> I'm I'm week to week, man. Yeah. I, I don't know if I can make it to the airport. Why did that bull? What that bull was laying down last night? Do you remember that one? Yeah. So do they it, get stressed it, out or it, what is it's it? It's interesting because keep in mind, animals they have a mind of their own. Yeah. And I think nerves are real when when you talk about animals. Um, I, I was thinking it might be stressed. Yeah, and a lot of times when you get into these new, you know, n- new bulls, yeah. like they haven't been around all the pyrotechnics, right. the lights, and everything. Yeah. So our number one priority is safety of the animals. Yeah. People don't realize that we run dirt all the way back out of the arena. Yeah. So that the bulls never step on concrete because okay. concrete gets slick. Yeah. So we've got a judge that's looking down over that. And if a bull starts to lay down or whatever, he's right there on top of it to say, okay, give him his space, let him, let him, you know, do his thing. Yeah. Or they'll put him on a clock. If they think a guy's wasting time, they'll say, you got 30 seconds or you're disqualified. Right. Okay. So there's so much more focus on the bulls Mm -hmm. than what people think. You know, we deal with animal rights activists a lot and everything, but they they just don't understand how much we care about these animals and how... Their safety comes before everything else. That dirt's hard out there, but that dirt's hard so that those bulls can push off of it. Okay. So that they've got a good footing. Oh, Cowboys are going to hurt. Yeah. They hate hard dirt. Well, and bulls are going to act like bull. I mean, I've seen bulls out just in the field that are pissed off yeah. and running through chasing things. They're so alphas, man. It's, like they're, it's not they're just acting like that because of the rodeo. Right. It's just that's how they are. Well, and the other thing is, is like before the show last night, um, 
there was a little girl back in the alleyway scratching on one of the bulls. Oh, okay. And those are the types of things yeah. that like, I love, I love to put that on social media Yeah, because there was a world champion bucking bull, greatest bull in the game. They would take him home and they would wash him and like scrub him down and he loved getting baths. But he knew when it was time to put on a show then. Bingo. Okay. Bingo. Gotcha. Michael Chandler is one of the nicest human beings I've ever met. Right. But when you lock that cage door, he's yeah. an animal. Yeah. Right? Yeah. You know that you've got a job to do. It's time. Those bulls are the same way. Yeah. You'll see a lot of them are laying around, relaxing. But when it's showtime, you I got saw, a job to do. I saw one last night, uh, a darker bull, but he, you know, threw the rider and then he just walked off. Mm -hmm. He just, you see, job was done, man. Yeah. He just walked like, man, it was weird. He's just like, okay, job done. Just yeah. walk slowly through the gate. I really do think <laughs> that they start to realize what, what their purpose is yeah. and, what, and when their job is over. And I, th I think they, I mean, they have personalities. It's not a think. I know they have personalities. Mm -hmm. You see it when you spend time around them. And I think there are some that kind of get that little edge yeah. about them where they're like, yeah, there's, there's some bulls that'll take a victory lap. Okay. People call me crazy, whatever, but come see it for yourself. There's, <laughs> yeah. there's bulls that will buck their guy off. And you know, every time the same pattern, they're going to make a circle and ride out the gate. Yeah. yeah. Like it's real. Wow. That's, that's awesome. It's fascinating when you think about it. Um, man, dude, I could sit here and talk forever same. about this stuff. I know you, you have a show tonight. Um, so I, I don't want to keep... Plus, we I'm had still a, shaking from the workout. We though, had a man. great lift, dude. You are strong. I appreciate it very much. You are strong. I, 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 I don't get nervous. Yeah. Like I said, uh, this made me nervous. Oh no, you're strong as a bull. Um, I did want to. I'll end up with this. This is a loaded question, but so who who has been you think the best that you've ever seen bull riding? Well, I mentioned both their names. Oh, you, you know, did. I, I did. Uh, JB Mooney has to be in that conversation. Yeah. Um, he's got two world titles, but he made a conscious effort every time he stepped into a position where he could select the bull he was going to get on. He could pick what bull he was going to get on. He always picked the toughest matchup. He always picked the absolute best. He wanted to prove to the world that he was the greatest. Um, and I think he did a, an exceptional job at doing that. And did, I love the line he said, nobody remembers an 85 point Nobody ride. remembers average. Yeah, but right? they remember that 90 right. plus. Yeah, They remember the fact that he was the guy that rode Bushwhacker. Right. They forget about the 11 or 12 times he bucked him off. Right. But they remember that day where he rode that bull that nobody had ridden. Yeah. Um, and there, I, I say him and Jose Vitor Lemmy because Jose is still in the prime of his career. How old is he? Uh, he's in his twenties. Like he's, is he? He, yeah, he's, he's, he's young. I, uh, don't get me lying, but, yeah. but I think he's late twenties. Okay. Um, mid twenties maybe, but, yeah. but he, but he's young in his career. He showed right. up in the U S 2017. Mm. Uh, he's got two world titles. He's the number one bull rider in the world, possibly going to get his third. Yeah. Only two other guys have ever done that. Um, is that. Adri Adriano Marias and then Silvano Alves. Okay. Both are three time world champions. Jose will win another world title. He's got his sights set on four. But the way he approaches this sport, and and the just like you said, you could tell pure domination. Yeah. He makes it look easy. It did. And I think that uh when it's all said and done, he's gonna be in that conversation, if not in the lead of that conversation. Mm. He he could be the guy. But in in my uh, in my mind, right, those are the two guys, right. I mean, you've seen I don't a know lot how many shows you've a lot shows of you've seen, but so much respect for those guys, so much respect for you and and the way you carry yourself, the way you celebrate the cowboys, the writers, the lifestyle. I mean, i'm I'm very impressed. I appreciate I'm, that. I'm very thankful for the invite last night and for you coming over and lifting with me today. This is uh, to me, these connections that we make in life, you know, it's just kind of a happenstance. You were in Eugene, right. yeah. mutual friends, uh, Rocket Ryan, I got to yeah. say, yeah. He, he said, hey, if you do a podcast, you got to <laughs> shout him out. Got to shout him out. Thank you, Rocket Ryan, uh, for, for connecting us. But it's these connections and, the, and these the shared journey that make life special and, and it but means what's, a lot. What's fascinating to me is we realize how many mutual friends we have. 
Yeah. And there's one commonality in all of them and they're really good people. Yes. And and good people gravitate towards each other. And I feel like that's, that's all a God thing. He brings, he brings his people close together to, uh, to share, share this life with each other. And so, yeah, well, I agree. Thank you very much. I appreciate you coming by. Appreciate it, man. All right. Keep hammering. There you go. Every step I take, I move my truth. Every time they tell me stop, I lose. Every comment, hate that makes my feel. Gather up my energy and boom. I hear them talking, saying the way that I move is so reckless. That is a part of my mind I've been blessed with. Giving my blood so I am relentless. My fault, they want someone to blame. They sent the hate, it fuels my pace. I am Roy Tuff. I am the change, the few endure. Feeling like campaign.